All right, hello everyone, and today we're having a new tutorial, a long time now see, but we are basically creating this little blob of kind of this combination of rectangles or blocks and spheres. I got this inspiration from Joe Riva. He recently made three pictures, which basically look like that. Those like little um, posts of like cubes, and we basically want to create the same thing here as well. I get you to the through the regressive definition of that, and then we are going to um, create those things. So here is the finished script. Basically, what we're looking at, we having our different sizes, obviously, and then we obviously have as well the thing itself, how it expands and uh, re can retract. And it can get a little bit computational heavy if you have a very big cube, as you see, because it calculates all the little things in there between between as well. Cool. So we will start now with a new file um, where we basically start with a blank canvas. And I just want to like show you exactly how we are going to go around this. So first of all, we're going to create many, many points like this that are going on a grid. And those points will be our basis. Then we're going to move those points um, upwards. Just let me change the color here a little bit to the Z direction several times. So we basically have um, this grid of points on several axes above us as well. Then we're going to create a small rectangle and we're going to create also a very small sphere that is defined by first of all the radius which is like similar to the radius up here like this radius here and obviously also the um, um, rectangle size and size of this distance that we have there like this distance over here and yeah and then we also need to look at some tree manipulation and some um, jittering it's called and we're going to go along the way so sounds kind of weird but i think when we go along it we can know what to do so first of all we are going to create um our points so we're gonna go construct points and we're going to create a series basically it takes three inputs the um, x y z coordinates and we're going to create um, a series of points that go in there. So they start at zero. Um, we want to have a certain step amount and the step uh, and the step size and the step amount. So we're going to create a like. By the way, you can create this by double clicking on the canvas like this, and we're going to create a certain count just so we know what comes out there. We see here. We create um, our points like this, and we're going also going to create a um, a size of this as well because you want to maybe change the stepping size of it as well. Cool, so we're gonna put this in the X and the Y coordinate. And as you see, okay, right now we're just gonna create a diagonal, but we basically want to create this list and create a list that makes those points for each of those. So if you're gonna graph this, you see in the first list, there's zero, one, five, three, four, five, and in the non grafted list, it's just all the normal values. So we're basically taking the grafted list into the other one. And voila, you see we have those points created all that we have those lists that first of all is 0000, zero, zero, zero with those points. Then the second one is the second value here, but with all those points and the third value is the third value. Thus, we have this very nice rectangle in the ends. Good. Now that we have that, we also want to create a little um, that we want to have it also in the Z value. So we're going to create the unit Z. And we're actually going to take the same series amount here as well. But if we're going to move them upwards now, like with the geometry here, the motion here, and then we're going to use the same series, you see as well, we have kind of a very weird result. Well, why is that? Well, we have um, our several um, geometries here and basically it, it takes each of those points and moves them up one by one. So like the 
if we take a look at the um, each of the branches, I'm gonna simplify this with a tree branch. We see those are all the branches, and this is like the list that it moves up to. So it basically creates the list of those uh, z vectors and just moves them up one by one. So we don't want to do this, but we want to move them all up, right? So we're going to do this by simply um, flattening this. And now you see it does it all just once and then it all keeps at the top one. But then we want to move it for each. So we're basically gonna graph this. And then you see now we have a very interesting cube that has some kind of weird um, thing sometimes as well. For instance, if you look at, you see like this looks kind of, it looks a bit trippy, but it's great. Anyway, um, now that we have that, we I would like to um, create, so there we have the base grid now, you see it does work fine if you was gonna make it a bit bigger. Um, and obviously also the, um, the size of the grid itself changes with it as well. So we're gonna keep this like at 10. And now I want to create the first um, sphere on the rectangle that we talked about in the beginning. And we're gonna place those in those positions. So we're gonna create a rectangle and the rectangle base, um, I want to be exactly around here. And so we need to X and a Y size for that. So we're going to construct a domain. And how we basically look about this. So we basically have our point, right? And I want this point to be in the middle of this, like, and so basically I want to construct a domain that goes from here to here. And I want to construct a domain that goes from here to there. And how would that look like? Because we have an X and a Y size. So basically this whole thing is one length, right? But we have to be at the half of the half of it in the negative and half to the positive. So we basically go minus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5 in this direction, and also the same with those two here. So we're going to basically take the number that we created here in the beginning, so the um, the data for the um, uh, size each, and then we also do the count, um, count total. And we're having uh, those here now, and I actually want to use the number slider because sometimes we can manipulate a little bit because we'd only want to take half of it, right? So I'm going to do expression and then do X divided by two. And this basically gives us half of this value. And the domain start and end, I want to have one of the negative. So I go to the domain end and do minus X under the expression tab. Right click on it, expression, and there you can get it. This one we keep the same because it's already was manipulated beforehand. Cool, and now that we define the domain, we can define our very nice rectangle. I think we can see it better if we're gonna, um, with Control Q, um, make this invisible. And as you see, we have our very first rectangle, which is great. And um, now we want to apply this rectangle to all our different uh, places here. But before we're gonna go do that, I still want to um, create the box of the rectangle. So we also have a height in this as well. And we're going to use the number here, but I think we are probably, yeah, we will we have to remove this expression because we want to have it have the whole length to go upwards. Perfect. Now we have our first rectangle defined here. And we want to move this rectangle um, from the vector of the beginning points to our last point. So the beginning point in this case here was just a zero, zero, zero. We can just say like this XY plan it was and we just x, x, y plane at this 0, 0, 0 point. And we're going to move this point now um, with a two point vector. This as the origin point, and this as our target point. And this will be our movement of our geometry over here. And as you see now, our geometry gets moved all over the place, basically where we want to have it. And we obviously have our base point here, which we going to remove um, at the moment here right now. Perfect. Now we already have our uh, rectangles defined, but now I also want to apply all the other spheres on it as well, um, which we don't want to forget in this case. So um, we're going to do the same thing. So we basically have our uh, base thing here. 
and um, in this case we have our right like our thing defined like this right and it goes a bit up here like the rectangle goes in here so I want to have at the same point I also want to have a sphere and I think I actually make it myself very easy in this case so we just use um, the cubed uh, format under I think it's under um, wait area is under here under surface analysis but we're going to use the volume and um, oh, that's very interesting and we're going to use the volume here so now we have our um, midpoint in this one and we want to create a sphere here in this case but actually I want to because there might get some trouble in there as well I want to get use the mesh sphere as well because it's a bit more lightweight um, but you cannot manipulate it further but we just want to have the mesh sphere and the radius would be the same radius that we defined here um, with our rectangle. You can use the count uh, the the radius here, so we will have a very nice um, sphere exactly in our rectangle, right? It fits in there perfectly. And the u and the v count are basically two counts that make them more smooth. So it basically creates more vertices uh, around it. So you see, if I increase it, you see it gets more round. If I decrease it, it gets more like a very basic one. So we're gonna have it like around like maybe like 25. Might be a bit high, but uh, okay, cool. And now we also want to move this um, sphere in the same way we move the other one. So we're just gonna copy this one here and we're gonna change the geometry over there. And thus we have our very nice um, spheres that we had created in the beginning here as well. Now, now we have our spheres and our um, rectangle, uh, our rectangles or boxes. But we also want to have now, because we have them in, in this case, like 10 uh, different uh, branches, we want to now remove certain pieces as well. When I, when we come back to the thing here, you see there are like, it's kind of random how they are removed or maybe Jariva was um, clever enough and he made some kind of pattern with it and he removed them as well. Um, I made some kind of pattern here as well and I put actually a texture on it which is a bit weird and wonky but uh, was fitting in my um, idea at the moment. So we have to, um, and how are we going to do this? Basically we'll create a list of numbers who are uh, random and to those we can also make a jitter depending on how you see it but they both go on the same solution and then we are going to remove certain things um, in that randomness. So you're going to use a random and the range will be between 1 and 0 because uh, I want if it will be near to 1 it will be a true and if it will be, be near to false uh, uh, near to 0 it will be a false. And um, we need to know the amount of random numbers and in this case it would be our list length Right, I would just like put it in here. So this will be our random numbers. This here is just like one for now. And this will be our list length. And it will create us a, a whole bunch of random numbers here. And we also want to um, create uh, the seat because right now, if I want to dispatch those, um, those uh, things here, I will have like the basic list here and I use the dispatch pattern here and I actually need to round the numbers as well to the nearest one so it then creates a boolean um, of like falses and truths as you see here you see like it creates some random like false true false true whatever and if I use this as a dispatch pattern and then look at the geometry that comes out of it you see it's basically always the same on each level. So what we have to do here is we have to create a, like a different seat for each of the places. Interesting. Um, this is sure I, uh, oh, interesting. I didn't know that it was, this was new that you can use uh, uh, control space. Interesting. Um, and we are going to first of all take a look at the tree statistics. So how many there are. So how many um, uh, tree branches are there are 10 in this uh, in this case and this would give us the same um, 
the count here, like 10, there are 10 different branches. And we're gonna use this as the base series. And then it will basically create here 10 different numbers. And those 10 different numbers we'll put in here. But this will for now not change too much. This will kind of look weird because here you see it can kind of get like duplicated. But we need to basically graph this. So it goes for each of those things because before it was doing it for the, for the things several times. But we want to have it like for each of them. Great. Now that those are um, removed, we can already see our very nice pattern with our structure of our cubes. But now we want also want to have the, um, the spheres in the other place, right? And we're going to do this by simply just like, um, in this case, I think we can actually just copy this dispatch. And we're just going to use the um, geometry here. And we're going to change the list from A to B. And now you see we have our geometry in this other place, which is great. And um, now I also want to um, create a stream filter that you can change between those things around. So we can basically use then this as the output here and this as the output there and create a gate here. And then we're going to use a Boolean toggle. Um, and then that says switch. And we're going to use this as like this one here as zero and this one as one. And the other one all the way around, the other way around this one here, you see, uh, the other way around. And this shall give us now the option to also switch between the spheres and the rectangles. Cool. And now that we have that, I also want to create a, because if we want to reduce uh, the range here, um, they're going to be more like this. And I think if we will increase them like to like three, there will be like more of the other ones. You see, it's going to be like, it's like a back and forth. It's gonna, it looks quite nice actually. It's like this like thing goes like, Pretty cool. And um, now that we have that, I also want to see if that works as well with the counts. And yeah, it's skill. You have to be careful if, if you can increase it to like 100 or something, it gets not exponentially faster, but actually cube faster. So um, be careful with big numbers here. Nice. It was like, it's like, whoop, it goes like back and forth. It's like a, like a thing, it's like creating itself. I should do like an animation about it as well. I think it's quite cool. Cool. Great. And um, yes, I think that would be it so far. So um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know how you can go about this. You can obviously change the, um, you can try out with, with changing the rectangles in here, or you can make different spheres, or you can make um, also Josie, uh, Joe Parla, he made like a one with cylinders and one with those like little cones. And I think this is, those are pretty great. And then the next step would be for you, obviously. Um, and then maybe actually it's the next tutorial to actually bake those and put this on a layer in, 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 in Rhino. And then you would be able to, um, actually make a rendering out of it. Um, because this will then be, will be the geometry, right? And if you look at the Arctic mode, in this case, um, we have to obviously still make some changes, but this would be the basic algorithm for it, obviously, as well. Cool. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope it's helped you out. Maybe I will see your own creations uh, that look like Joe Ribas or that I was uh, very kind of like stealing from him, uh, this idea. And um, yeah, let me know if that helped you out and see you in the next one. Happy scripting, obviously. <laughs> oh yeah.